This is Red Moon Role Playing. Chairman, someone has slightly put our equipment off here. I can see that our navigational channels are, are sabotaged. Not by themselves. Someone has actually done something. Ugh. I guess you're right. We should have already been there by now. Can you... I turn to the... Jan and the others. Can anyone do something about this? We, we need this to be working. Yes, you can. Uh, Jan, you see exactly what the problem is. You can fix this now that you know what it is. You've lost some time, but you can still make it there. Yes, I. that should be fine. I can actually... Uh, we'll just be a bit late. I guess we'll have to stop at some point and have another meal, and then we'll be there. Not too bad, but still begs the question. Who of you have destroyed everything, I say? I look at the others most suspiciously. I don't really think that they have, but... Shreem and Masima look back to you and shrug. Yeah, and it's not gonna be us if... <sighs> there seems to be an awful lot of interest in this little sight. I'm worried that we might run into some trouble. It's possible somebody could have tried to tamper with the equipment so that we didn't get there in time. There might be company. Karima... Just be ready, will you? Trima nods, and uh, you can see that she uh, touches her coil rifle and makes sure that it's it's all ready to go. And finally, you do arrive. It's good that you caught that. Finally, you, you would have been driving in circles otherwise. The colossal fissure, it slices through the asteroid's surface, a jagged scar that plunges into the unknown depths below. Its edges are ragged, testament to the violent forces that tore the ground asunder. Somewhere down there in the abyss is the answer to the prospector's fates. And we are now about to begin our delve. And Yan, as a scout, your mission here is first going to be to scan the ruin with your deep scanner. One success. You do get a success. And what that then means is that you have been able to scan this 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 ruin. Now you need to send Pteric off to scan for blight. Two successes. We seem to have one blight pocket coming up before a um, fork in the road. There are a few ones coming down. This one first will be on our uh, starboard side there. It's coming down there. And then there's a few more coming up uh, on, on our different sides. All uh, at a minus strength uh, of one, I'd think. As we get a little bit closer into another valve, that this is interesting here. Because there's actually a little side path here. Might be a little um, place where they have sought shelter. Might want to have a look at that. It's, an, it's another passing coming up further ahead. Though that means we'll have to go past one more pocket. What do you say, gentlemen? Hmm. I look over the scan results and I say, We can check that later. We'll give it a look over quickly and see if there's any threats, but otherwise our priority is to get down there and check on the survivors. If we have time on the way back up, we can have a look. Well, just imagine if they were in there, though. But if they, we went all the way down there, it turns out... Oh, I there was said this. we will check for frets, Yan. Yan. We check for hmm. frets. We look in that direction. But if we don't hear or see anything, then we don't spend time going all the way in there checking. Not when there's people at risk. Uh, just thinking, what if they're all in there and they're dead? You know, they won't make any noise if they're dead. Well, then, when we don't find anyone at the bottom of this thing, it will turn out they were there the whole time. So it's always so difficult. It's always so difficult, I'm thinking to myself. He he goes against every suggestion I ever make. And then he makes that grimace again. Oh! Well, there's the results anyway. Derek, you're a great bird. Well done. Derek chirps as you disconnect them from the uh, Garuda device. And, uh, yes, now it is actually time to begin the delve, and this is uh, where you come into the picture, Jeremon. You're going to be leading the delve down here, and uh, it, this is an agility role. You have talent for this, and you also have equipment that you can utilize uh, to lead the party down this shaft. I look over the crevice. I look over the information that Jan's gathered. Start getting out the equipment. 
I make sure everybody is tied together by rope. It's important. I'll, of course, be leading the way. I'll have Karima be at the far end, so that at least we're covered both sides, if you will, with someone who's got a gun. And then, of course, Yan and Masima can go in the middle. And I'll start the low, ponderous delve. Taking my time, checking the rope, beginning to climb downwards, using my hammer and ice pick to give myself a bit of additional footing. I've done this a lot, and I know what to do. Two successes. Begin first by rolling for Blight. I have got one success. No successes. Then, uh, Jeremon, you will take one point of despair. Then we're going to roll for an event here. So, you've traveled two, and then roll a d6, please, yeah, Jeremon. Six. You notice it on your suit first. Tiny specks of purple dust particles. And then it surrounds you, a cloud of dust flakes whirling in the air. It covers your visor, clogs up your breathing filter, and hinders visibility. It feels like you are delving down into a whirlpool of dark cinders pushing up against you from the depths below. Delver, roll for perception. Six, one success. Then you find your way through this quickly. No problem. No problem at all. You've got this. It's time to continue. Delver, roll again. And strike two supply. I frown a little. The darkness was one thing. I'm used to that. And of course, I have a big lantern on my exosuit, which helps pierce the darkness. But the readings on the blight should have... Maybe I should have switched to a different sort of armor. Hmm. I might try and quicken the pace just a little. That's one success. One success it is. Then let us continue. Time to protect against Blight again. Oh, one success. And one for me as well. The Blight is not a problem for you then. Then uh, roll event. You have traveled now three, so roll a d6. Two. Two. It's these specks of purple dust again. They, they come back, again clogging up your breathing filter. Roll for perception one more time. No successes. But I'll push the roll, because I didn't get any ones. One success. Then, again, not a problem. You find your way back down quickly. We continue. Roll to delve again. So, sadly, that is no successes and two ones. Then, uh, again, roll for Blight Protection. And I take one more heart damage. Seems like something seeped through. Didn't get a success this time. And we roll another event then, so... Um, I reckon maybe Jan can roll this time. Roll a five, so that's eight. Something is wrong. Your compasses spin wildly. Your lanterns flicker and you feel something tugging at your tool belts. It's as if your equipment has come to life by some weird happening. Pieces of your equipment float away slowly from you, rotating as if caught by an invisible axis of a freak magnetic storm. Roll for agility, everyone. One success. I don't succeed. German, you're fine. You manage to hold on to all your equipment, but Jan, you lose one piece of equipment. Choose and remove an item with one encumbrance from your explorer sheet. I lose my scanner. How about that? I, I, I try to hold on to all the things that are going away. And I just think I've got them when I see my scanner floating away about two yards away from me, just out of my reach. And I say, no, no, not you. Come back. But it is too late. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, everyone. I think I've lost my scanner. Hopefully we can get it on the way back up. But did you feel that? There was something just tugging at us. Something. And if I recall correctly... I don't have the scanner to read now. It's, it's, uh, there were no registered life forms and no uh, radioactivity, at least. But we have other other pockets coming up. Sharima and Masima, not you. Let's be careful. Keep our eyes out. All right. Delve again. Two successes. Then you can choose if you would like to explore this auxiliary passage or if you would like to continue heading down. As we continue... And I'll be frank, we're heading slower than I'd like, but it is a really steep vertical drop. I will consider that direction for a moment, and I'll call out. Hello? Anyone down there? I, I, I can remind you, gentlemen, that even though I lost my my, 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 my scanner, 
There, there, there was just no registered life forms. None. None. I think they're all... I think they're all dead. Everything is dead down here. I nod and gesture to continue downwards. The blight's worse than I thought it would be. We don't have time. We, we, we get to the bottom, and then we get back up again. It could be could be artifacts in there, but from seeing them, if I remember the reading correctly, there were some quite interesting uh, structures down there. More likely we'll find something of use down there, yes, yes. Though I can't actually see, I couldn't actually see how uh, severe the blight damage was in there. I know, we'll have to keep the bird ready. Of course, of course. Always. And I'll grimly push us downwards, again making sure we head down. At least now I feel a bit confident and we can make a bit more progress. Indeed. Then uh, roll to protect yourself against the blight as you're moving down two steps. One success. I get one too. And the blight has nothing on you. Now we roll an event. Five plus a d6. Seven. There is another one of these magnetic anomalies. Your compasses continue to spin. The equipment begins floating away from you again. Roll for agility. See if you can hold on to your equipment. Brace yourselves. Another one incoming. Oh no, not this again. Three successes. I get a success. You're able to hold on to your uh, things. And uh, now we remove two more supply based on the distance that you've traveled. So as we start descending further, I'm getting used to the tunnel and I do start moving quicker. Again, when I actually have a good grip on things, I do know what I'm doing, being a bit of an acrobatic individual. So let's do another delve. Yes, you have four more steps to get to the structure. Two successes. All right, I am going to push which will cost me one more hope, because I've got one one. Ah, okay, okay. So I did get a one, so I think I have to lose an additional hope, yes? Yes. But I then got three successes, so five successes total. And remember that you have a keepsake that you can use. Then I will lose the keepsake, yes. Um. I begin rapidly moving down the t- cre- crevice getting used to the air, getting used to the dark. But I'm worried about that blight, especially as I see on the suit the sensors begin to indicate an increase. I say to everyone, follow me. No more talking, no more wasting time. We move quick. And I'll look at the keepsake I was given, that little book. It's a bit awkward looking at it, obviously, clambering down a crevice, but I can kind of feel it. I can feel it on my person, and I just pray once more to the spirits, and I begin actually doing a few abseiling jumps. After all, I'm pretty sure we're not going to run into anything too bad if we just move quickly. We should be coming down to to meet in slightly elevated ground down here, just in a little while, and we should be able to walk the rest away a bit down, I think. Looks quite straight, the tunnel here. That's right. Lantern's on. Let's get moving. We'll just have you do one protection against Blight 2, then. One success. Then you take one Blight. Having decided on the quite heavier delving suit seemed a good decision. I got two successes. Then we have ten plus a d6 to roll the event that happens. You can do that, Yan. That's six. Sixteen! The way ahead is blocked by ice-like stalagmites, their surfaces glimmering in beams of your lanterns. There seems to be purple leaf-like fragments embedded in the translucent stalagmites, casting the environment in a colorful hue. There's no way through here. You need to make way through fours. But that's exactly why Misima is with you. We can roll for Misima's strength here. Seven. I roll four, Craig, and you roll three. Nothing from me, then. Just a one. I got it with success, though. And Masima is able to crush these stalagmites with her pickaxe, and you make your way through here, and you actually make it all the way down to the structure. As I feel, according to the scanner, that we're approaching the area, I'll say to Yan, the readings are starting to spike up a little. Do you think maybe... Maybe we should send the bird forward. 
clear the area just in case there's a, a spike we're not expecting. Uh, I suppose. I mean, we could uh, uh, send her off as a little scout and uh, we'll see if uh, there are any blight. Uh, it could be amber patches or and if there are low or we can only see if there are low or high levels, not exact levels. But Do um, you think that's helpful for us then? I don't want to get caught off guard. We got lucky so far. Let's do this now. I know she can only do it so many times before she gets tired. Go ahead with the um, the insight roll there, um, Yalmar, for Paterk. Oh, that's terrible. Terrible roll. No, I have no successes here. As you get down here, a chamber opens up from the smooth corridors of the ruin. The structured walls slant upwards to a high ceiling hidden in the shadows above. Long grooves line the northern part of the room, rising to the roof, forming a flower-like intersection. The grooves seem to move as the shadows from the lanterns generate weird interference. The furrows make the room resemble the inside of a strange machine. Cerulean blue dust flakes that float in this room, reflecting the light of your lamps. The grooves dissolve and give way around the engraved patterns covering the southern wall. You definitely think there's going to be shards in here for you to harvest. Shards are worth between 50 to 250 shickles each. This room, this antechamber, is it something that you would like to explore? This consumes supply. Sure, I'll look to Yan as we finally enter this cavern. I'm constantly checking that blight indicator, but shit. I guess we just have to trust in the spirits. Yan, scout ahead. What is this place? What we got? Yes, it seems awfully hard to read. I'm getting very little information from Tarek, despite his magnificent capabilities. And, and well, this is a crappy old book, I say, and I put it away. Right, right, but this is where the fun starts, everyone. And I really feel a very strong tingling now. It's so exciting. I mean, everyone is dead, of course, but... <laughs> oh... This is it. This is it. The ruins. Let's see them. What can we find? Let's look around. So, what the, then happens is that you search, and that will consume supply. We should also uh, make sure that you have scratched the five supply that you used getting all the way down here. And then you use one supply to search this room. First of all, Jan, you know quite a bit about structures like this, left behind by the builders. You would say that the interior seems to indicate that this ruin dates back from the 12th era, roughly. And you also see that the engravings form a rectangular door at the southern wall. At its center, their motifs change into a circular glyph. And can I ask you to do a logic roll? Oh, yes. As it happens, I am a glyph scholar, so I get a plus one then when trying to comprehend a glyph or decrypt all text. But is this about that? Yes, it is exactly about that. Fantastic. Why is this so hard? Why is this so hard? No, don't get any successes. And I'm t- t- scratching my head at this point. It's like it's some completely different civilization, something I've never seen before. Why doesn't this look like anything I've ever seen? And I get a success. The um, symbol that you see here, you know what this means. It means machine or mechanism. This is a door. It should be possible to open but seemingly not here. Somewhere else down here, you reckon that there is going to be a way to get this big door open. And you notice that there's marks on this door that indicates that someone has tried to force their way through with a pickaxe or similar tools. Unsuccessfully, however. There's a prospector's lantern that can be found close to the western exit. Seems like someone went that way. And to the eastern exit, you see that there is a patch of dark iridescent frost. Mm, This you generally know means quite a heavy blight. Mm. I don't think we're going to go that way. There's a lot of blight there. I mean, if anyone... I suppose it could be the bird. The bird could always go in and have a look if we want to know what's in there. Um, This, though, however, I point at the glyph. I actually do recognize it means machinery. That means probably that this door is uh, operated from somewhere else in the ruin. <laughs> Some fool has tried to use the pickaxe. Look, it's been placed over there, trying to get in there. Well, you know what that could mean. It could mean they did make it down here. Yes, yes. 
So it could mean that. That's the most likely thing anyway, yeah. If they can't go up, where else would they go, Jeremiah? Hmm. Let's stick together. Let's scout the perimeter a bit more. We're not going to go down that tunnel you said has more blight. We, oh, unless you want to go, you've actually got the protection. But let's see. I want to find them first before we try opening doors. But if it's if you see where it opens, go ahead. You can also mark down that you have been able to find eight shards in this room. A bounty. So, are you heading west or east? The direction that wasn't the heavy blight tunnel. That's the western passage, then. As you're moving through there, it's a curved corridor, a few paces across. Dust particles hover, refracting the dim light around. The silence here amplifies the isolation, each footstep echoing through the tomb-like ruin. Purplish d blue dust flakes are floating upwards, slowly gravitating towards you. You hear a rhythmic screeching sound, vague but distinct, from down south, like nails on a chalkboard, or stone on stone. Would you like to continue following that sound? Cautiously, yes. Cautiously. Yes, Sharima and Misima have their weapons out, and they're prepared as well. What about you, Yan? Ah, oh, what is that? Is that such an annoying sound? It's grating. It's so annoying. Whatever it is, you tell them to stop when you get there. I will, Yan. I'll ask him real politely. You come to a chamber with slanting walls similar to the previous rooms. The walls are covered in engraved geometric patterns that sparkle and shimmer weakly. A solitary suited figure, seated on the floor facing the wall, casts long distorted shadows against strange patterns written on cold stone walls. The screeching scrape of rock on rock echoes eerily as the figure carves at the wall with intense focus. Would you like to explore this room? Yes, we're gonna head in carefully and I'm gonna... Call out. Hey. Hey, you. You do that. You can mark one supply that has been used. You see that this is clearly one of the prospectors. Will you move up to her? Slowly. But I do motion for Karima to have their gun ready. And also their medical equipment ready. Karima does have doctor skills. Hey. We're here to help. We're the rescue team. What's going on? What are you doing? You see through the helmet that her skin is ashen and grey. The blight has clearly gotten to her, but she is alive. You see that she's drawing something on the wall here. It seems to be some kind of vertical structure on a disc with three oval-shaped structures beneath it. Strange. Like something floating in the air. I would like you to roll empathy to try to get her attention and, and get her to notice you here. One success. You know who this is. This is Yahamala Kaif. That matches the description. She looks to you. Uh, you here to save us? When people are this far gone with blight, what exactly is the procedure? Can you still even try and save them, or would she endanger all of us just by trying to Pull her along with us. I'll take care of her, says Sharima. She, you know that Sharima is, uh, well, she, she knows some medicine. She can help sanitize Jahamala and uh, help get her at least well enough to be able to move with you. If you are going to bring her with you, you're going to have to lose one more point of supply, though. Will you do that? Of course. We're here to save people, and Sharima would tell me if it was too far gone. I look to my own sanitizing kit because I might need to tend to myself soon. Not that I'm a a dangerous level, but I don't want to risk my own health. Okay, we're, we're you're coming with us. What what happened? Where's everyone else? Are you the only one left? Uh, I don't know. Somewhere. You're not getting anything out of her. She's very far gone. With proper care, she can probably be saved. But but you're not going to get anything uh, out of her here. Yan, you see patterns here. Can I ask you to roll logic? These are glyphs and the like. Alright. So, I was thinking now, as we started to see a little bit of the shape of the whole place, and also, of course, using the scans as part of my deduction, I was wondering if I could roll archaeology to try and understand the purpose of the whole place. But are you asking me more like if I want to do glyph scholar, or...? Let's do archaeology, actually, yes. 
Well, that's one success. Rianne, these patterns, they're similar to the ones found in the Cave of Syrah in the Auriga system back in 185, four years ago. At that site, the patterns seem to have something to do with the visions. Yan, there is something quite inviting about that pattern right there. You have a feeling that if you touch that, it's going to give you a vision. A vision of what this place might have been. Oh, this here, you see, this is this here most magnificent. I think this here might actually, might actually have a very strong, very strong, I often say, a psychosymmetrical connection. I babble on and I go over and I touch it. And you see clouds, clouds everywhere, gray, black, and heavy when you look down. When you look up, you see them shimmering in a golden haze. Above, a yellow gas giant dominates the sky. Suddenly you see something huge appear in the cloud bank in front of you. Something slowly rising out of the fog. Glimmering towers and vast buildings spread on a large structure supported by three oddly shaped mountains floating in the clouds. There's a city. You are, you are on a city surrounded by billowing clouds. You're surrounded by towers reaching for the sky. But something, something's wrong. The ground, it trembles beneath you, and the city tilts to the side. You see the abyss looming below, and you feel it closing in. The mountains below have given way, save for one, one still floating while you pass it. The city plunges downwards, taking you along with it. I want you to roll insight. No, no success is there. Then you plunge with the city down into the gas giant, and you lose one hope as the gas giant swallows you and the rest of the city that is not caught here in the asteroid moon. There's one piece remaining, that's the one that's here. But you, you're on the part that enters the gas giant and is devoured. I... Close my eyes for a second. That was... uh, very intense, very intense. I am turning my head slightly to the side because inside of the suit I have attached the pouch of Sarah Zira uh, to my clothes. I can just tilt my head down and take a deep sniff of it. Ooh, oh, everyone, everybody, I have just had the most interesting, tantalizing connection to this place. Oh, oh, you wouldn't believe it. You wouldn't believe it, Jeremiah. Jeremiah. What did you see? Did it tell you how to open the door? Did it show you where any people were? No, no, no. Not not practical in that regard. More insight into what it used to be. It used to be a great golden city. Flying above the clouds, the only gas giant beneath. We are now in one half of that city. The other half plummeted into the gas giant. Got eaten by it. Maybe that's what I felt yesterday. The remaining despair of all those citizens getting sucked into an endless cloud of gravity. Surely they died, all of them. Strange, though. I wonder why the city would be on the inside of this place. Could be remnants in here, though. Or maybe that was was, was on the outside. I think maybe what we're finding here on the inside is the machinery just keeping the whole place afloat and working, the inner machinations of the city. Yes, that must be what we're looking at. All right. We're going to have a look. But if we don't see any survivors, we're not going to go and... I don't want to tackle any, I don't know, machinery. No, no, no such thing. I'd much rather... I could stand a bit of blinds, but... Yes, mm, yes. We'll see, I suppose. Let's uh, see. Must be other greater artifacts in there, though. Grima with me. And you find another six shards that are faintly glowing with the, the patterns in the chamber. You can harvest these as well, if you would like. Is our bread and butter when we don't get anything else. The glow disappears as they are removed from the chamber. But they are shards and they are valuable. Do you continue onward? Well, heading forward and feeling relieved that it seems that sound was actually the poor woman. 
I still go forward carefully with my gun, but let's explore just a little more. Yes. You come to a chamber with angled walls, haphazardly covered in sprawling purple vines, black leaves and small iridescent buds ready to open. The vines seem to writhe in an unseen breeze. There's a faintly glowing symbol that you can see behind the vines on the northern wall. The vines twisting changes direction as you enter, as if reacting to something. Perhaps you. Would you like to explore this space? What are our options? Is this a dead end, or does it continue? It continues uh, further beyond there, and then there is this, this thing that's seemingly glowing behind the vines. And Yan... <laughs> that symbol. It's the one that you saw on the door. Mm. Oh, oh, oh. I see. Look here. This here, this right here. This must be connected to the mechanism that's going to open the front door. That no one has opened because they were trying to pickaxe it. Wouldn't that be the most interesting avenue uh, uh, we could go down? I call out again. Hello? Anybody down here? I'm concerned. We're getting through supplies a little quicker than I thought we would. I look to these vines. I look to Yan. I nod for him to go forward, but I accompany him with my hull axe out rather than my gun. I'm a little worried about these vines. So I take it that you're exploring then. Scratch one supply. As you're moving forward, yes, the vines, they're moving, they're extending. They're moving closer to you, towards... Is it towards you, or...? I'll try dimming the light a little. As you dim the light, you see how they move backwards. They don't seem to be all that interested, if it's not light. Do you do that as well, uh, Jan? Oh, very clever, very clever. Seems like they're drawn to the light. Yes, very good. Jan... Turn your light down and do your thing, but don't don't touch them if you can. Don't disturb them mm. if you can. I'll... Yes. Of course I will. And I get so annoyed. I get terribly annoyed. Why? Why does he always say these things? They say these obvious things to me, like he's out to get me. It's a personal attack. And I dim down the light very, very sourly. Yes. And... You see this circular plate that's embedded in the wall behind the vines there. It's got that symbol on it. You think you can just reach through the vines there. You have no idea what they're going to do if you touch them, though. Uh, well, you see, gentlemen, I could try and reach into this, the operate this mechanism, which I think will be vital for this expedition. I can't reiterate, re- re- I can't reiterate this enough. But, but, I'm, I feel a bit clumsy. I won't say anything else in this suit. So perhaps we can clear it all up with a little bit of, a little fire. If you all step away, Sharima nods, and uh, brings forth the flamethrower, and fires it off towards the wall, towards the vines, and they immediately pull back uh, the ones that haven't burned up. And the circular plate is now fully exposed. There's a symbol that you can press. Same symbol as the door in the antechamber. Mm-hmm. I can feel the excitement in the air. We're just mm, going on a bit maverick in here. I just reach out and I try and push the symbol. Is it going to react? It does. There's a vague rumble on the ground. The way is open. There it is. There it is. All right. We've done it. We've done it, gentlemen. All now comes for the real treasure. Yes. So, there's uh, an exit to the east. Dark frost surrounding that. And there's the way way back. Yeah, this must be connecting back to the first chamber. A bit quicker, perhaps. But, uh, of course, a bit more dirty. Yeah, you're gonna take a few steps, just a few steps more. I'd like you to scout. If you see anybody, try and get them to us. If not, we'll, we'll turn back. But someone could have gone in there. Like, mm, you're right. You're right. Of course, I will do that. I will do that. I'm properly equipped for it. Hop up on the shoulder. Come on, Terry. Let's have a look inside. 
So you can clear the blight if you want, and here you can use then the bird candy as well. So then you, uh, you do the coaxing, so that's an insight roll. Well, I roll one success. So Pteric flies off, and you hear a screeching sound, a, a chittering sound, a clickety-click sound, and then Pteric returns proudly and lands on your shoulder. It is done. All right. I seem we have cleared the blind. Not sure what that sound was, but the uh, bird is safe, so this should be the short way back, Jeremiah. Well, if it goes all the way around, I guess we'll find out. Let's progress then. Good work. Good work. As you move through this eastern passage, would you like to explore it? Yes. One and scratch one more supply. And there was something here. It's very fortunate that you sent Pteric to clear it. This ceiling was crawling with blight crawlers up until just a moment ago, and they are quite ferocious. But they're gone. You scared them off. And not just that, you removed all the blight, and you see that there's a disc lying here on the floor. It seems to be of builder origin. It could be valuable. It looks like an artifact. Look here. Look here. A little, little piece of a prize at last. What a good job you've done, Derek. I kneel down to pick this up. Derek uh, chirps. This uh, disc is an artifact and takes up one point of encumbrance. Very good, very good. I glance around. I take a moment to take out my map tools that I can use for mapping. I quickly do a bit of doodling of where we've come. Do I think we've been going around in a circle around the main interior, as it were, according to that map we saw earlier? And if so, do I think we've almost come full circle, or is it time to now just turn back? You uh, are now ready to uh, come all the way back. You have explored this entire location. Wonderful. I nod to the others and say, pick up the pace, let's get back to that door. (sighs) But where? By the ship. Ah, the rest of them... (laughs) I swear, if they were in that little tunnel all the way up there, I'm going to be annoyed. And you make it all the way back. You're back in the antechamber with the high ceiling. Jamala is with you. Masima and Shreema are taking care of her. And the door has indeed opened. And in the shadows of the asteroid's heart is this immense chamber that's stretching upward, its roof soaring more than 100 meters above. The smooth, seamless walls curve gently to meet the distant ceiling. They are covered by an otherworldly mosaic showing patterns that subtly shift depending on where light falls. A raised dais in the middle of the vault is reached by sloped platforms, and there's a pedestal in the center of the dais. Would you like to explore this space? I think we have to, so one more supply. And as soon as you enter this cathedral vault, you are both subjected to a blight surge. That is one blight that I would like you now to roll blight protection for. Well, that could have been a lot worse. Could have. I still take the damage. I don't. I feel a little woozy as we enter this place. Again, uh, there's too much blight down here. I should have worn better stuff, but I I was just so sure we were going to run into more trouble. Never mind. I'll kind of motion for Yan to go forwards. Yan! Hmm. Scout ahead. Work that thing if you want to. And then I guess we might be done here. Yes, let's have a look. What is this dais that's ahead of us and reaching up? According to the scanner, there should be several valves just straight above. It's round like pockets. Can I see the ceiling even? You do. And you see many other things. Scintillating dust flakes swirl high in the air above the central dais. They rotate as if in a twisting cone. Sprawled on the floor here, you see a body in a miner's suit, one leg twisted at an unnatural angle. And then there's a slumped figure in a prospector's suit, seated against the pedestal. It's not moving nor reacting as you enter. There's a sphere the size of a head that lies on the stone floor, half a dozen paces from the pedestal. It's glowing and pulsating with charging patterns. What do you do? 
Look at this. Look at this. Seems like your companions made it in here, and I must assume that they, it was open maybe when they came, and then they got shut in. Uh, maybe look at them first to see what they've been exposed to. What twisted this leg out of order? Yes. Do you go to the body or the slumped figure first? Well, I disregard, I suppose, the slumped figure. Something has done that. Maybe they were pulled up by some some sort of force. Uh, you go over to the slumped figure instead. Hmm. Collapsed against the pedestal here is Birsa Lovada, leader of the missing prospecting crew. She's alive. Dehydrated, wounded and blight-ridden, barely conscious. I'm going to call over Sharima. Sharima! This one's alive here. I think it's the expedition leader. You see, we can get her back on our feet. And Sharima comes over and begins uh, trying to interact with uh, with the uh, Beersa here. She needs water. Are you alright if I give her some? She looks to you, Jeremon. We can just about spare it, but... After we clear this room, we have to head back. Otherwise, we might actually be running low on supplies now, especially since we'll have to be carrying at least two extra people. You lose one more supply then. Birsa um, is looking at you, Yan, and uh, at Shrima. <sighs> You're here to rescue us? Yes, yes, we are here. Don't worry, we shall take you back. Could you tell us what happened here? What is that thing, that sphere lying over there? And what happened to that poor fellow's leg? Uh, this all started when we removed the sphere from this from the pedestal. If you go near it, it, it has a f- tremendous force. But I think it's some kind of valuable artifact. I figured if I could just reach it, I could put it back and discharge it. But I, I don't have any energy to to do that. I'm barely holding together as it is and it, it, it got poor Nev I think he's dead what do you mean it got him did it, it, it th- throw him through the air lift him up oh, how did his leg get like that she nods at what you just said as though that was exactly what happened mm-hmm. I see alright well gentlemen this is it this is our grand artifact not sure what it did when they removed it from the center, except in releasing a lot of force. Uh, I, 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 don't, I don't know if that's what started the place collapsing, but it seemed like a normal thing from the from our driver. So I would say we take this. Why don't we take this back? Are you sure it's safe to do so now? What if it fries you or something? Fries me? I mean, it's docile now, isn't it? It looks like lying there on the ground. Unlike when it was up there on the altar, I don't know, it fries me, I don't know. I go over to it and I start looking at it. How close do you get to it? I kneel down about, uh... Yeah, I look really close to it. Then you are hit by a tremendous unseen force. Two damage, but you can use your armor here. No, no successes. Then you take two damage as you are thrown across the room, but the sphere stops glowing. There, put it back on the pedestal! I frown a little and dart forwards, see if I can grab the sphere. Can I do that? Yes, you can. It seems inert right now, but it's kind of starting to hum as though it's charging up again. Ooh, Dad and I will quickly move and put it back on the pedestal as instructed. I scream, of course, as I've flown across the room. Uh, I, 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 do, I do scream as I, I fly there. It's a... Ah! In the slump across the wall, hitting myself really hard, and I struggle with getting up. Pteric uh, sits next to you and, and moves his bird head back and forth, seemingly asking if you are all right. Oh, I'm all right, Pteric. Just need a second to recuperate. Thank you. Oh, The artifact discharges fully now, and the charging stops. It just lies there on the pedestal now, as though... You could probably take it now. It's been rendered inert. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I look to everyone else, and then I will just pick it up, and what on earth is it? Just a singular metal sphere. And as you do that, you hear someone clapping. 
and there's a voice that you recognize. As you see Zara Van Dau and her crew wearing black delving suits with their guns drawn. Well done, well done. I expected nothing less from the Explorer's Guild. And uh, Sharima and Masima have their weapons out and they're looking to you, Yurima. No, 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 don't worry. We're not gonna kill you. All we need is that artifact. And then we will be, as they say, out of your hair. How many of them are there? Four. And there's four of us, but me, well, we do have some weapons. So it's almost equal numbers in a way. Mm -hmm. Is there anything I can roll to assess the situation? Are we well and truly taken by surprise or is there a chance? Well, it's going to be a fair fight here. You don't really know who this Zara is. If if there are maintenance technicians, then this shouldn't be a problem. You you have a guild soldier with you. That should be more than enough. But uh, is that all they are? They made it all the way down here. Let me guess. You're not engineers. Not really. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yes, you're correct, but I don't kiss and tell. Now this artifact, why don't we just deal with that? You you give the artifact, we, we let you take the survivors back, you be the big heroes, we get what we want, you get what you want, everyone walks away alive, happy and rich. Hmm. <sighs> I sigh a little. At the end of the day, this was a rescue mission. We've got some shards, and... Well, I know Yana's got that little artifact of his own, probably in his backpack or something. I have no idea what this thing even is. Not worth dying over. <laughs> I, I, uh, get myself to my feet. Uh, three thousand, three thousand, three thousand, it's yours. Yes, start brushing myself off. Oh, oh you want us to pay you? Oh, <laughs> and 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 uh, Zara looks to to the others, uh, and as though she's wanting to trigger them to laugh, and, and they do that on command. <laughs> Pay you, <laughs> good one. Well, I was just thinking that uh, we uh, would probably kill at least two of you if we are going into a fighting situation, and I think that you, those lives might be just worth a little bit more than that. <laughs> what do you think? <clears throat> I, I just, I'm just looking at you, and you, you look absolutely uh, out of it. Uh, most of you are blight-ridden, and the others look like you've uh, gone through hell. It, I mean, yes, it was a, it was a difficult delve, but, uh, well, you seem to have had a tougher time than we did. Are you really sure about this? I uh, look over at, at uh, Jeremy, and I give a little shrug, like, what else do we live for? Oh, throw it over. So it rolls down on the ground. Enjoy. Let me guess. Black Toad. And uh, she looks at you just long enough uh, before denying it that you realize that you're spot on. Black Toad. <laughs> Black Toad. Black Toad, they said. Black Toad. <laughs> uh, and one of the flunkies picks up the artifact. And Zara looks to you and uh, puts out her arms. Well, um, good luck getting up. Um, nice doing business with you. I I hope we don't see each other again. So do I. Quite mutual. And she does a uh, salute and uh, begins disappearing off. Oh, what are you thinking, gentlemen? We could have taken them easily. Easily. You're already... One word from me and Terrick would have taken one of them out just like this. And I snap my fingers and it doesn't go very well. We were taken off guard. We have people we have to protect. I'm sorry. I can't. We don't do this for the money. We do it for <sighs> the thrill. Right? The Maybe. Passion. I don't know. I'm not gonna risk all your lives just on the one shot that I don't even know what that thing was. We we have enough. I'm sorry. Well, no, Sharima is going to be disappointed. Fine. Well, I suppose we got some people to drag back. There's two of them. Two out of five. I suppose. Not terrible. Not terrible. Besides, at least you got that thing in your pack. I do have the thing. Probably a minor artifact, but um, 
Yeah, thanks to Terry, we found it. It was a good, good bird. I'll look over the others briefly and I'll just mutter. <laughs> if it, we'd come down here a little better prepared, maybe, but I can't risk your lives. I'm responsible for everyone. You understand, right? Shurim and Masima look to you uh, as though they're thankful for you not taking any risks. Oh, yeah, it's the right call, the right call. And I do inwardly curse a little because a little extra pay, especially for the Explorer's Guild, is good, but no, there was something about those four. If they were black toed, they were more dangerous than they looked. We could have taken some of them, but we may have lost some of ours, and it's not a risk I was willing to take. Do you begin returning then? We load everyone up, we make sure they're okay, I attach them with the remaining rope, and yes, I will begin the trek upwards. As you begin getting close to the shaft, you hear screaming. It's close to where you're supposed to ascend. It sounds like someone is in a lot of pain. I'll look to the others, get my gun ready, and just move forwards. Uh, that might be. Other friends? What else could that be? Maybe a bit careful now. I give Yana a nod and gesture to Karima to just, let's go forwards, but lay low. Guns ready this time. As you're moving forward, you get to the ascension point, and, and there's frost, and you even see what you think might be ice. This is this is bad. There's blight crawlers everywhere, and you see the black toads, as you surmised. Two of them are being devoured by blight crawlers, and there's a hand holding an artifact. No body connected to it, lying there on the floor. There's blight crawlers everywhere, though. You can try to take this if you would like, or you can do the safe thing and just go up. What do I think's happened here? How is it possible that this many blight crawls could suddenly and rapidly have come behind us? This place was clear. They were chased away, weren't they? That's right, we distracted them. Ooh, wow, they are certainly having a feast over there, aren't they? Blight crawlers only like to be around when there's plenty of blight. If, you know, if I, we've got, luckily, luckily, how good that we s- s- spared that extra energy. We saved it for the crucial moment, the pivotal time in our expedition. And this is just, this is just it. This is just exactly the moment we were waiting for, to go in there and clear it all away. Bright corners will skitter and we will get the treasure. Oh, magnificent. So do you then coax the bird to clear the blight? Oh, yes, and it's been so good this whole time, this whole expedition, that I'm going to give him my last little bird candy for this and make him feel that extra bit of motivation. And it is one more energy burnt. We've got two left, though, and one success out of eight dice. And that's all you need to chase them away, and what is left behind is gruesome. It's difficult to recognize the pieces left behind this human, even. But that artifact, it's still there. The blight crawlers made very quick work of this group. You are very fortunate that you didn't have to face them directly. <laughs> well, weren't we lucky? Weren't we lucky? I go over and I uh, pick up the artifact and uh, slowly try and uh, take one finger away from it as uh, at a time as I take that detached hand and, and throw it to the side. I suppose now the only real question is if we bring it back to the navigators or if we want to sell it expensively. You know what? You know what, gentlemen? I met this uh, Coriolis fellow, and just like you said, they want to bypass all the real channels, and they offered us 5,000 shekel for this. I would say this is a grand artifact. What do you think? Hmm. And we bring the small one back, you know? No. We're going to bring it all back to our employer who we serve, loyally. (sighs) Uh, Well, all right, let's do that then. I just realize I don't care about money, but it's fun saying things and seeing what happens when I said them. Mm. But I'm going to, I don't want to carry it, I was going to say. I don't want to carry this. If we have more of these strange surges, I'm just going to lose it again, just like that navigator. Let's keep an eye on it on the way back. I want to find that scanner again. Is there anyone still alive? 
No. <sighs> I'll kneel down anyway. Briefly touch the medallion. I guess in the end, these folks weren't as clever as they thought. What a waste. Waste of life. May the spirit watch over you, Black Toad. I hope they judge you better than, well, you'd have been judged here. Let's roll out. As you're now returning through an already explored ruin, there's no need to make any delving rolls. We just need to look at how much supply that you have to reach the surface. So, we do spend ten more supply. We got quite a low, but we do just have a little left as we finally breach back on the surface. Do you, um, stop by the, uh, auxiliary path as well, or do you just bypass that? I suppose we have time just to do one last check, as we are heading up. You do that, and Misima blows open some rocks that have blocked that path, and, and behind it you find the final prospector dead. You also find some supplies that has been left behind. You're able to add another three supplies, uh, and you have now the final body with you as well, so you have recovered the entire crew. And you make it back up. And exiting the fissure, you see a sleek white spaceship that's landed right next to it. A figure in red robes and a large opaque helmet stands before it. It's Itrepo Ashura Miramira. He uh, has seemingly been waiting for you and speaks with a voice twisted beyond recognition by the suit's voice modulator. You have it then, I take it. The artifact, he uh, says, looking at Jan. The artifact, have you given my offer some thought? We didn't oh, fight. yes. Oh. Mm. I look over at a uh, gentleman who's talking at the same time as I. Yes, I was just going to say, we've been thinking quite, quite intensely. Only thing, almost, that we thought about this whole time. Um, but uh, I think that seeing as you are not our regular employer, it seems like it was loyalty is what's keeping us from striking such a bargain. I say, yes, isn't that right, gentlemen? Yes. That's right. We didn't even find anything worth much, but if you want to take that, and I then just holster my gun, you're welcome to try. The last bunch of people who tried didn't do so well. I, no, no violence, no, 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 no. I said five thousand, but you you must you must have misheard me. Six thousand. How's that? Six thousand. Hmm? <laughs> that changes everything. And I just begin moving back to our loader and getting ready to depart. I, I give a little shrug and they. Oh well, is it pity we aren't freelance, isn't it? Idealists, I see. Not to worry, my friends. In the end. You all have a price. He says, moving back up into the ship, into Kassar's dream. And after some time has passed, as you've packed up the people on the rover, you see how this white ship departs. And you head back to Jalen's point, and you bring back the prospectors. Some of them, at the very least, are alive, and you are celebrated like the heroes that you are. Chief Calvanides again approaches you, uh, Jeremon, offering to buy the artifact from you, but I'm guessing you're not in the mood for selling to her either. No, but unlike the others, I'll just politely say I'm sorry. If you want to talk to the Explorers Guild and make a deal, you're welcome to, but I don't betray who I work for. But you don't understand, this was my chance to get out of here, now I'm, I'm going to be here for the rest of my life. She just shakes her head and, and, and looks at the gas giant and then moves back into the outpost, crestfallen. The artifact will be intensively studied in the months to come. You have brought it back, something very, very valuable. But it will refuse to give up its ancient secrets. It will show only weak traces of its former power. The conclusion will be only one. This sphere is but part of a much larger machine. A much, much larger machine. And with that, our first adventure for Coriolis the Great Dark, which has been called The Sky Machine, comes to a close.
You have listened to an episode of Red Moon Roleplaying, where we played The Sky Machine for Coriolis The Great Dark, which is published by Free League and is on Kickstarter right now. The music was created by AlphaZone and Sabled Sun and was used with permission from their label, Cryochamber. Please check out cryochamber.bandcamp.com or their YouTube channel for more of their lovely dark ambient. We would like to give massive thanks to our champions of the Red Moon, Martin Horshobear, Simon Cooper, David, Julia, Camilla, Bob Lange, Cameron, Anshon, Graham Barry, and Doug Thompson for their generous support. And we would of course also like to thank all of our other patrons. Without your support, this show would not be possible. If you want to support our work, please check us out on Patreon. You can get access to bonus campaigns for Cult Divinity Lost and Coriolis there, as well as get early and raw access to all of our recordings. You can also hear your name read on the show as a champion of the Red Moon, as well as play Cult with us. Most importantly, that support is what keeps the show going, so do check us out there. Thank you again for listening, and remember that the portals are dead, Ship City is dying, but there is still hope.